Just how do AMD and Nvidia stack up in ray tracing? Well, that is way more complicated to answer than you might think, and it's hard to get a straight number out of it. Uh, in Cyberpunk RT Overdrive, we see the 4080 Super crushing the 7900 XTX here by 83%. However, if you check out other ray tracing titles, you might not see such a, a demanding difference. And also, how do we stack it up? Do we stack up AMD's 7900 XDX against the current generation 4080 Super and say how much faster the 4080 Super is? Or do we try to find a, uh, an NVIDIA product that has the same ray tracing performance as a 7900 XDX and say that this equals that? And that could be difficult. I saw a lot of people try to do that around uh, when the 7900 XDX came out at launch. And a lot of people were saying uh, that that it basically equaled the performance of an RTX 3090 or 3090 Ti. And uh, that's sort of true, but also not. It, it hides a lot in these averages. What are we looking at here? This is a, a meta-analysis of launch reviews from 3dcenter.org. So you can see a whole bunch, ah, I'll become a mouse pointer, of different review outlets on the side over here. And you can see the 7900 XTX performance set as the baseline. And we can see how the different GPUs stack up. And this is currently 4K ray tracing results from those launch reviews. And you can see that the uh, 3090 is reaching 93% of the performance of a 7900 XTX, meaning they're fairly close, but actually the 7900 XTX is ahead. And the 3090 Ti is at 103%, meaning it's 3% ahead of the performance of the 7900 XTX. So looking at this, you would say, oh, so the 7900 XTX has closed the gap on the previous generation performance from uh, NVIDIA flagship, case closed. 7900 XTX equals 3090. Well, the problem is if you actually stack a 3090 up against a 7900 XDX, that's just not what you see. So for example, in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, which is a, a modern ray tracing showcase, we're seeing the 7900 XDX 20% ahead at 4K ultra settings. Now things get even more complicated if you allow upscaling, which is probably how you'd actually be playing it, because now I see the XDX ahead by 14%, and the uh, 3090 is producing better image quality due to upscaling advantages with DLSS versus FSR, so it's not even exactly the same thing. Uh, but what if we look at other games? What if we looked at uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake, for example, 4K max settings, which do include some ray traced reflections, the XTX has a 34% advantage. So it seems it's way ahead of the 3090. Ah, but what if we pop in the Cyberpunk uh, again? Here we see at 1440p RT Overdrive DLSS quality, a 50% advantage for the 3090. If we look at 4K RT Overdrive DLSS performance, we see a 38% advantage for the 3090. Uh, if we try to just do 1080p RT overdrive with no upscalers involved at all, uh, we're seeing a 40% advantage for the 3090. If we go into Alan Wake 2, uh, which is another uh, heavy-duty ray tracing workload, we're seeing a 24% you know, advantage for the 3090 at 4K RT high settings with DLSS FSR performance mode. So which is it? This is all over the place. And if you're thinking about buying a new GPU, you should definitely check out jawa.gg to fund your upgrade. Uh, because I can get you $10 off your first purchase, and uh, they have a, a bu bunch of used options, but speaking of that, you can fund your upgrade by selling them your graphics card, and I know a lot of people hang on to their GPU, stick it in a closet, and it doesn't help them fund their upgrade because they're afraid of maybe selling it locally and getting mugged, or they don't want to deal with the listing themselves. It sounds like a hassle, and that's where Jawa can help out by offering you the simplest and fastest way to sell your GPU. Uh, you follow the link in the pinned comment and or video description, you click get an instant offer, and it's super simple. Uh, you tell them about the GPU model and condition for an instant offer, you print your free shipping label and mail them the GPU, so all the shipping costs are handled by them as part of the offer price, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, they inspect the GPU to make sure everything checks out, and most sellers get paid within one business day after the part is received. So again, uh, you can fund your upgrade, and if you're looking for a good deal on a, on a GPU from Java or anything, uh, get $10 off your first purchase using code OWEN10. Now, again, getting back to what is going on with all of this, uh, these ray tracing results, well, if we look at the four results uh, I just showed you, if I look at the 4K ray tracing results in Avatar, uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Cyberpunk RT Overdrive Mode, and Alan Wake 2 uh, with RT High, 
uh, you can see something here. So, so what I'm doing is I'm basically dividing the 7900 XDX's result by the 3090's result to get it uh, expressed as a percentage difference, with the 3090 being set as the baseline. And what we end up with is that the, uh, the 7900 XDX is 20% faster in Avatar, 34% faster in Resident Evil 4 Remake, but it ends up being 28% slower in Cyberpunk RT Overdrive and 19% slower in uh, in Alan Wake 2 RT High. Now, so what does this mean? So as somebody who occasionally teaches statistics, uh, how do you describe this data set? It, it's really split all over the place. Like the average, the measures of central tendency will be somewhere around zero, meaning that there is a uh, very little difference in the averages between these results, but the range is quite high, going from positive 20% to negative 28%, right? So it's kind of uh, all over the place. And this is where you get results like what we saw in the launch reviews, where we saw that the, uh, the 3090 and the 3090 Ti were very similar in ray tracing performance to the 7900 XTX. Um, that, that, that's where we get this from, because if you take this data set and you then try to do a geo mean or even an arithmetic mean off the results, you would get something like this. So if you do a geometric mean where you uh, express those, those uh, multiplica multiplicative factors uh, and then root them by how many there are, uh, it basically comes out as around 98%, meaning that the 7900XDX in, in my testing is reaching about 98% of the performance of the 3090, since I set the 3090 as the baseline. If I took those multiplicative factors and did an arithmetic mean, you get a slightly different result, but it's still around 100%, meaning they are very close to the same performance level. Geo means probably the way to go here, but it's, it doesn't come out that much differently. I you know some people don't understand geo means, but whatever. Anyway, the point is uh, that when you're looking at a result like this, I think that while it is true to say on average, they're producing about the same result. I think it's also true to say they don't at all produce the same ray tracing experience. <laughs> and this is where uh, I think, uh, you'll notice there's not a lot of averages and not a lot of graphs in my GPU review videos because it's kind of for this reason. I get hung up in how much information is lost when you try to reduce it down to an average. Because in general, I think a better way of describing the ray tracing differences between AMD and NVIDIA is that AMD loses more of its overall performance. In other words, there's a higher frame time cost for AMD the higher the ray tracing settings are pushed. Because if we actually look at the difference between these, Avatar has levels of ray tracing that were really designed to run with consoles in mind. Uh, so it's not absolutely crazy levels of ray tracing. It still looks excellent, but uh, you know, consoles are running AMD hardware. Uh, Resident Evil 4 has some really grainy ray traced reflections uh, that honestly looked so bad, I actually ended up turning them off when I played the game, even though I was playing it on a 4090 that I def absolutely had the headroom to use the ray traced reflections. Due to their kind of low quality results, I, I kept them off. I also kept the screen space reflections off. Look, they thought they looked grainy too. Uh, whereas Cyberpunk and Alan Wake 2 are uh, very much NVIDIA funded ray tracing showcases. Now I've seen some people in the comment section want to dismiss them because they're obviously NVIDIA funded showcases, but the fact that they're, uh, you know, NVIDIA is funding heavy ray tracing, I don't think, um, you know, while, well, obviously that, that does give them marketing advantages when you show how much faster they are than AMD. I think from the end user perspective, you're like, yeah, but it looks really nice. Like, uh, like, like RT overdrive mode in, in Cyberpunk looks great, right? So uh, from the perspective of somebody wanting to play that game, regardless of how it got created, right? <laughs> um, I, the NVIDIA GPUs will perform a, a much better there. So uh, that's kind of a, what it really comes down to is, is I think the, sim the simplest but still kind of accurate way of looking at this is the heavier the ray tracing workload, the further uh, the, the, the relative differences uh, expand into NVIDIA's favor. AMD loses a larger uh, percentage of its performance or its frame time costs are in increased by a greater amount. 
Uh, we can look at other GPUs. We don't have to be looking at flagships, last gen or current gen. Uh, what if you looked at something like the RTX 4070 against the 7900 GRE? These are two GPUs that cost the same roughly in the current market. They're about $540. This might be more where somebody might be actually spending their money. So if we look at this, we see the uh, RTX 4070 versus 7900 GRE in Alan Wake 2. Again, big ray tracing showcase. But what if, what if we use the ray tracing low settings off of the high preset baseline? Notice that here, the 7900 GRE is actually winning by 10%. It's not a dramatic win in either direction. But if we go up to the RT high settings, we now see that the 4070 takes a 54% lead. That being said, even with uh, quality level upscaling, the 4070 itself is only hitting 37 frames per second. So how usable is it overall? Because that's, that's the other thing in all of this is that the, while Nvidia's performance advantages accelerate, uh, you know, relative to AMD, the heavier the ray tracing settings are pushed, you still need incredibly powerful NVIDIA hardware to actually achieve the frame rates that you might want to be playing on. So in other words, how much do you factor the ray tracing decision into your buying decision? Well, that really comes down to you. What sorts of frame rates are you targeting? Because if you buy a 4070 for its ray tracing advantage over 7900 GRE, because hey, it's 54% faster in Alan Wake 2 at RT high, but are you really wanting to play the game at 37 frames per second, right? Because if you then turn down the ray tracing settings in order to get a more playable experience, well, now the GRE is actually faster by 10%, right? Um, so it's, like I said, it's complicated. It's very difficult to boil it down to any particular number. So while uh, numbers like this are interesting, remember that they're actually coming from charts like this, which show a much more split result. And I think that's all I can leave you with uh, today as far as how, how good or bad is AMD at ray tracing, the lighter the ray tracing workload, the less it hampers AMD's performance. Now, which one should we expect more of? Games like Avatar and Resident Evil or games like Cyberpunk and Alan Wake 2? Well, I think most game development focuses around um, consoles. And so uh, games like Avatar, which have a more console level focused ray tracing development, I think might end up being more of the norm. I'm interested to see how the PS5 Pro with its increased RT features um, and, and power level uh, plays into uh, game development. Uh, games like Cyberpunk and Alan Wake 2 though, I don't see any reason why Nvidia would stop uh, trying to choose uh, games and, and, and work with devs to implement some ray tracing showcases. So I think these will still happen too. But like I said, I think most game development um, probably would focus more in the console direction, but still, uh, you know, where does that leave us, <laughs> right? I think hopefully you guys at least um, understand the differences and understand that boiling it down to a single number is kind of silly uh, in terms of what it's actually describing. So if we look at uh, the 4080 Super up against the 7900 XTX in something like Avatar, which again, maybe that's more like what we'll see from uh, consoles, uh, then we see that, you know, the 4080 Super is certainly ahead of the XTX, but it's not by a uh, wildly different margin like we saw with the 80% in Cyberpunk and things like that. Anyway, I've got to go get my kids up and ready for school. So we're just going to end the video here. I hope everybody has an excellent day.